seems to have returned to southern Kaduna after several reconciliatory efforts, including the peace resolution signed by the leaders in the community at the behest of the state Kaduna, Nasir El Rufai. As the peace truly returned, uh, joining us to discuss this is Francisco Zaligo, legal practitioner and tax consultant. Thank you for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. So since the peace pact was signed by Atia Pausa and Fulani leaders, has there truly been peace? Well, we are very grateful to God that uh, since the signing of that uh, peace pact uh, on the 22nd of August 2020, there has never been any incident of the breach of peace in Atia Children. Uh, we are grateful to the people for cooperating. We are grateful to the security agencies for being there to assist in the maintenance of peace, the maintenance of law and order in our children. We are also very grateful to His Highness the Wafia for taking concrete steps to actualize what is contained in the community, in the peace understanding. And I think it's a general, we are very grateful to everybody. And we pray that this will continue so that uh, we continue to enjoy peace and security in the Tiap Chivdom and by implication, enjoy peace and security in the extended geographical entity called Southern Kaduna. Mm. And uh, looking at that communique, the communities agreed to forgive and forget. How will we not yeah. be able to confirm that? What about the perpetrators? Shouldn't they be arrested? Yeah, we, we are also very grateful to the security agencies because they are now fishing out the perpetrators of the crisis and picking them one by one. Uh, we are also very grateful to the people for cooperating with the security agencies because the people of the children have been divulging information as to who they suspected, either perpetrated or assisted or conspired to perpetrate the act. And the security agencies are on top of the situation. And this is the assurance the people are getting. And this is why confidence is fast returning uh, to, you know, on the people, on the security agencies and what they are doing. We, we are grateful to them. We thank God that at the end of the day, they should be able to fish out all the perpetrators who wreak havoc, irrespective of tribe, irrespective of religion, irrespective of where they come from, and investigate properly and bring them to book. It is only then that justice will be done to the people of our children. It is only then that uh, people will feel very happy and then continue to assist and support the security agencies to ensure peace and peaceful coexistence in our children. Hmm. And uh, what confidence do you have in the resolutions reached that, uh, and is it likely to put an end to this more than four decades war? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, <clears throat> Since the 1992 crisis in Zongon Kataf, local Zongon Kataf, uh, which eventually emerged as a Tiap Chivdom, as it is today, we have never had any serious breach of peace, apart from skeletal skirmishes here and here and here and there. We have never had any breach of peace until uh, June to August this year. So the people have resolved to live in peace. And you see, we, we are not saying that there won't be any crisis. But we are saying that we have evolved a mechanism to manage crisis whenever they, they, they put in their ugly heads. And that is the difference. Because, because crises are bound to happen. As far as people relate, they are bound to be crises. But the ability of our people, the resolve of our people to manage crisis decisively is what will ensure peace and security in our land. And that's what the people are resolved to do. It. And that's what our leaders, both traditional, are resolved to do. It. And that is why the agreement set up the structure for dispute resolution in the children. And we are making it clear that, look, this time around, nobody should take law into his hand. If you have any dispute with anybody or any community, report that to the traditional institution, the traditional structure for peaceful resolution of the crisis. Because we now have a traditional structure on ground that will be able to address decisively all the crises that is cropping up in the children. That is kudos to the traditional ruler, and we are very grateful for that. And so, and so we are not saying, like I said, we are not saying there won't be any crisis. There may be crisis, but at least the people are resolved that they are going to address those crises decisively 
and meet them in the boot even before they materialize or they snowball into a community crisis as, as in June mm. uh, and August this year. And uh, is the formation of the Southern Kaduna State still being conceived in the long run? Well, everybody lacks self-determination. If at the end of the day, governments feel and the people feel that we deserve a state, so be it will be very grateful. We'll be very grateful to have a state. In fact, I will be very grateful to have an Etiab state, not even a Southern Kaduna state. Because I know the closer government is to the people, the better for us. The better will be will be. So so if at the long run the, the Federal Republic of Nigeria feels that we deserve a state and I pray they give us that state. That would be good for us because we'll be able to but let us also bear in mind that even if we have a state, it may not be a panacea that we will not have crisis. There should be, there will be crisis. So all in all, what I'm saying is that the ability to manage crisis is what people should think seriously about and evolve a mechanism so that whenever there's a crisis, they are nipped in the board, they are managed very well. And when they are, once they are managed very well, you will discover that we'll have a secure environment with less crisis, and that will be good for our development as a people. Hmm. Now, what about the security presence? Are they enough and uh, vigilant? Well, the security presence cannot be enough, but they are better off. They can never be enough because they cannot go to every nook and cranny of our children. But they are better off. They are more in number uh, now than before the crisis. So they are more in number, their presence is being seen, their presence is being felt, and that we appreciate them for that. But my sister, the most important thing is that the people resolve to live in peace. The people's resolve to maintain law and order. The people's resolve not to take law into their hand. That is what is going to bring peace in the kingdom. And that is why we have been telling the people, make up your mind that you need to live in peace. Make up your mind that you need to resolve, you have resolved to secure your environment. And then whatever a support we have from the security agencies is going to be an additional support. It's going to support and consolidate our resolve to be in peace. And that is what is peculiar to this, to what we have done. Because we make the people to understand, to appreciate the fact that, look, security is in our hands. Yes, government has the primary responsibility of maintaining law and order. There's no doubt about that. That's lawful. That's constitutional. We know about that. But again, we as a people, we also have our responsibility, our civic duty to maintain peace, to secure our environment. Government will support us. And that is why I'm very happy that when this decision was presented to his the governor, he there and then immediately said he was so happy, he was so elated, and he promised us that he was going to support us. And we have seen what he's doing. Most security personnel have been sent to our area. They are working assiduously to maintain peace and order. And other things will come along the line. So I'm happy with the development now, and I pray that it will continue. And I want to urge all the patrons of Christ, please stay clear of the chap children. We don't want you in our midst. Please stay clear. Let us settle our matters amicably. And we have done that. We have taken steps. We have recognized that, yes, we have wronged each other. We have apologized to each other. We have seek forgiveness from each other. And we are resolved to live in peace. Please let us live in peace. Don't come and disturb our peace. We will not take that again. Hmm. So we just spoke on uh, the security agencies. How about traditional rulers? Uh, what, what role are they playing actively now to forestall any further crisis? Thank you very much. The, 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 the peace summit was initiated, was summoned by the paramount ruler, Sir Dominic Gamboyahaya. He did wide consultation among the Etiap, among the Fulani, among the Hausa, among peace practitioners, and among people that he felt are in a position to support him to actualize peace in his domain. It was after that wide consultation that he now summoned the meeting. Now, when he summoned that peace meeting, I was there, I participated fully. Report that all the invited guests from within and outside the kingdom, from within and outside the monastery, honor the invitation. That shows their commitment to support him to succeed. That shows their respect for him. And so they all came and we congregate and discuss each piece. And after that resolution, after that community, he didn't stop there. He now decided to bring down the resolution to the grassroots. Last week, this week, Monday, 
He held a meeting in his palace with all the pastors, all the imams in his children, and all of them honored the invitation. And there he preached the gospel of peace. He showed that he distributed the resolution, the committee, and asked them and someone to go and implement this among your congregation, among your faithful. Thereafter, he also, on Tuesday, summoned a meeting of one of the districts where the issues crop up. The youths were there in number, the women, the children, the adults, everybody came. The palace was full to capacity. And he then addressed the people and told them about the community and told them about the result of the people and what they're supposed to do to enhance peace and give them the marching order to go. And he told the pastors, look, if any of you is not ready to abide by the community, a children is not good for him. Let him move out and go somewhere and, and carry out his preaching. So everybody was called upon to abide by the, the resolution. The meeting is continuing today up to Friday. At the end of the day, he's going to congregate another big meeting to finalize his uh, approach to, to sanitization to the people around. Again, you know, he did this, but he knew the importance of government in actualizing peace in our area. So he, he took this decision to his excellency and officially presented this document to the governor. And the governor accepted it joyfully, with excitement. And he said, if other communities would do likewise, peace will return to Southern Kaduna. He pressed us. And in order to show his appreciation to us, he promised he's going to execute certain projects in our land to show that he appreciates the steps that we have taken to bring peace into our land. And he said, if he brings all the if government brings all the, the police, the soldiers in a chapchildom, they cannot maintain peace. It is our resolve to maintain peace that will bring peace, that will secure our people. And so he was so happy. And in appreciation for that step we have taken, he said, I am going to do projects to you. We are grateful to him. We are grateful for the support he has given us. We are grateful for everything. And today, we are happy that we are on a better footing, security-wise, in our children. Interesting. Uh, your feedback has uh, built up lots of optimism for lasting peace in Southern Kaduna, and we do hope that that's the reality in the coming days and years ahead. Thanks again uh, for being on The Breakfast. Moving on.